Hello. Moses led the Jews out of Egypt from slavery to freedom through the deserts and to the promised lands and taught them the Torah God had given him on Mount Sinai. Yet, when Jews around the world tell the story of the Exodus at the Seder table, his name is not mentioned. He does not appear at all in the Haggadah of Pesach. Why so? Does he not deserve a place of honor in this narrative? Our commentators offer many possible answers. First, the Vilna Gaon said it was to emphasize that God himself took charge. The Haggadah stresses this point with God saying, quote, and I will pass through the land of Egypt. I am not an angel. I am not a seraph. I am not a messenger. I, the Lord, it is I and none other. Some say it was a reaction to the Samaritans almost deifying Moses, when in fact Moses was simply guided by God. Rabbi Yekusiel Yehuda of Klausenberg notes that in difficult times, there may not always be a Moses available, but God is always present. Therefore, we emphasize that God alone redeemed us from Egypt to make it clear it can happen again, even with no Moses. Klihenda makes an important distinction. Our spiritual freedom was confirmed by God alone, not by Moses. The Exodus entailed physical release from slave labor and spiritual release. The exile forced physical oppression on us many times, but our spiritual release was never removed. And that is why, and that is what we're truly celebrating. The Hafez Hayim said it was to emphasize that Moses was extremely humble. The Torah makes it clear, quote, now this man Moses was exceedingly humble, more so than any person on the face of the earth. Moses would not have wanted to be in the spotlight when the story of the Exodus was told. And the Psalmist wrote, God fulfills the wishes of those who fear him. Sedeitz Haq speculates that the narrator in Haggadah was Moses, who was telling his own sons about the Exodus. The Torah makes it a commandment. Quote, and you shall tell your son on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I went free from Egypt. Moses' sons did not participate in the Exodus because they were in Midian at the time. So Moses, in telling them the story, didn't want to emphasize his own role. Along those lines, Zot HaTorah observes that the Haggadah expands on some verses in Deuteronomy formulated by Moses to thank God for the land of Israel. Now Moses speaks in the first person in Deuteronomy, so the text minimizes Moses' contribution. Kovetz Kol HaTorah reminds us that one does not thank the servant in the presence of the master. Since the Shekhinah, the divine presence, is traditionally celebrating with us, we should not thank her servant Moses. The Haggadah says, quote, if the Holy One, blessed be he, had not taken our fathers out of Egypt, then we, our children, and our children's children would remain enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. The Zohar tells us that the Israelites had reached the 49th gate of impurity. If they had fallen one more level, they could not have been redeemed. Only God's mercy prevented that final fall. Itaruta the Leila, not Moses. Some remind us that Moses didn't want the mission. At the burning bush, when God tells Moses to free the Israelites, Moses tried to get out of the job. Quote, but Moses said, please, O Lord, make someone else your agent. The Midrash says that Moses, knowing only the Messiah can end the exile once and for all, and knowing it wasn't him, was asking God to send the Messiah at that time. So his name is omitted. There are also mystical reasons. The Messiah will have something of Moses' soul in him. The Midrash says that Moses was the first redeemer and will be the last redeemer. Quote, Rabbi Levi said, God told Moses, let this be a sign to you. In the wilderness, you will leave them, and from the wilderness, you will bring them back in the Messianic times. Unquote. Now, Moses was a Levite, and the Messiah will descend from King David. So Moses can't come back as the Messiah. But the mystics say the Messiah will have something of Moses' soul in him, and Moses will get full credit at that time when his mission is accomplished. Full disclosure. 
Technically, Moses' name does appear once in the Haggadah, but fleetingly. When the rabbis recount the miracles, they quote the Torah, which says, quote, the people believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. But he is clearly de-emphasized by being only called God's servant. And of course, God is mentioned first. The explanation I like best is the recognition that children for whom the Haggadah was established have difficulty understanding God, but can easily understand a great leader like Moses. In order to make them know and appreciate God, we must de-emphasize Moses. A final note, the last part of the Seder is Nirza, our prayer for the ultimate redemption. It has a gematria of 345, same as that of Moses, Moshe. So in this sense, the last prayer in the Haggadah does allude to Moses and to his once and future role. Hag Kasheh